Imagine you're living your best life. You have a cute childhood friend who wakes up daily, nice parents, and a good village. Everything you could ask for is there, but one day, everything changes. This is the story of Alec, aka Alexander, who lives in that small village situated in a small country named Tancred. It was early morning, and we see our main character is sleeping, and someone is trying to wake him up. He was drowned into deep sleep, but he felt something heavy on top of him. When he opened his eyes, it was his childhood friend Claire trying to wake him up. Alec reacted normally at first, but then he panicked and asked her why she was in his room. She happily said that his mother let her in and that it's her privilege as a childhood friend to be there. Sounds like quite a dream for you, doesn't it? The boy then asked her why she was in his room so early, and Claire replied that her father had brought a jar of honey from a bee nest, so she's trying to get a taste of it. Alec was shocked at first and asked her if it's really okay to do. She said it's definitely bad, but that's why it's fine. Then Alec smiled and accepted her invitation. It seems both of them were just two normal troublesome kids. Claire lives in a bakery and unsurprisingly her parents are aware that she and Alec are very close. Claire's mother welcomed them both in and then Claire started heading to the room where the honey was kept. She found the honey and both of them did a smug face before digging into the honey. Then a figure appeared before them and asked them if the honey was delicious and they replied that it was the best and they loved the forbidden flavor. And then they turn around. It seems that that figure was Claire's father and he was not happy. Both of them looked quite afraid and then got a knucklehead to their heads. As soon as they were done with this prank, Claire thought of another plan. She heard that red feather grass soup can make you lose your hair, and she's planning to use that on the village chief. Alec refused at first, but he eventually agreed to pull off the nasty plan. Maybe that's the reason why we hate kids. Both of them got really excited and headed out. Then we see their mothers praising their friendship and asking them to be careful. Our hero thought that he could live like this forever, and that he would keep spending his extra time with his childhood friend. At least, that's what he thought. One day, he came back after sunset, and he heard somebody screaming. Alec peeked to see what was going on, and he saw a man's head getting disconnected from his body along with some fingers. He then peeked through the windows to check on others, but everyone else seemed dead. He panicked and almost vomited. Then he smelled smoke and wondered about its source. Then, a man rushed from behind and asked him to run away from there. Alec asked what was happening, and the man said that the Dark Clan was attacking the village. The Dark Clan is the Demon King's army, and they had already destroyed the west half of the village as ogres and goblins were roaming around there. The man then told Alec to run away again, but he instead ran in the opposite direction as his home was in the southwest part of the village. So Alec rushed out there to make sure that his parents and his friend Claire were safe. He saw Claire's dad and he was already dead, and Claire was being tormented by the goblins. He then heard her pitiful voice asking him to save her. Alec then rushed towards the goblin with a plow in his hand, but a goblin threw an arrow towards him, but his mother saves him just in time. He asks her to save Claire too, but she ran away while carrying him. Alec kept asking to save Claire, but she still didn't listen. He then asked about his father, but before he could ask anything further, his mom said he has to live. Right before she could say anything more, she gets shot with multiple arrows in her back. Then, he saw a demonic figure taunting them and telling him that he will wait and face him at any time in the future. Alec then took an oath that he would destroy the entire Dark Clan and all of its members. Fast forward 20 years later, Alexander has become a full-fledged hero, and he and his companions are hanging onto a dragon to attack the demon race's headquarters. It seems they were having trouble hanging onto the dragon's bag using nothing but rope. Their main strategy was to attack the demon king's castle and defeat him. Their plan was simple. They'll raid via air and kill the demon king to end the war. Every soldier seems to have a bad backstory, and that's why they volunteered to go. Alec thinks that he could take the demon king out even if their lives are on the line. According to him, it'd be a cheap price to pay. They finally arrived at their destination and started descending into the castle. Everyone was prepared for the fight, but the hero party was way too low on members. At first, they faced an undead who was killed by a holy magic user who was then killed again by the demon reinforcements. The old man did the heroic move by buying some time for the hero. Meanwhile, the hero moves on to the demon king's room. The demon king was sitting on his throne and praising the hero for making it this far. He then introduced his name, Gold Gias Olgi. His presence was enough to shake the hero to his core. Then, the battle started and it seemed the Demon King has the advantage. Then, Alec remembered his childhood friend's face along with her father's. His life was flashing before his eyes and at the end of the fight, the hero's neck was at the Demon King's hand. 
Then the Demon King proceeded further and shattered him. As he was mourning at his last moment and sees Claire for the last time, he miraculously opened his eye and sees the Demon King in front of him. He was confused at first, and then we see a bigger picture and the small hands of the hero. In the background, the Demon King was talking with some other demons and we saw a baby's hand. Furthermore, the Demon King named that child Jilbagius. Meanwhile, the hero in an empty black space was very confused. Little did he know that he was reincarnated as the son of the Demon King. His mother was sure to make him the next Demon King, but Alec, who is now Jilbagius, was still confused. At first, he was whining about the situation, but he later took it as a second chance to defeat the Demon King and the entire Dark Clan. After two more years had passed, a lady was looking for the demon prince Jilbagius, and she happened to be his teacher. Jilbagius was trying to avoid her and thinking of investigating the castle to know the clear structure so that he could use that information during his revenge. Whereas his teacher is getting pretty angry. Despite being two years old, Jilbagius grew so much, and that's because the demon race grows much faster when compared to other races. The hero was just getting jealous because he thinks the demon race is blessed as they're growing too fast, whereas he spent 20 years of hard training. Meanwhile, an adult as a baby doing baby stuff, that adult, especially if he's male, will surely be embarrassed. It's been four years since he died, and he is the seventh heir of the Demon King. The war against humanity was going well, but the demons have not yet concluded the war. He was thinking of getting some more information and handing it to the Pan-Human Alliance, but he was puzzled on how he will make them believe in him now that he is a demon. It takes 15 years for a demon to fully grow, plus it seems he doesn't have enough freedom for his movement. He was talking to himself about his plans, but he finally got caught by his teacher, Sophia. She dragged him to the study room and made him continue his schoolwork. Sophia is the head of education there, and she made a contract with the Devil of Knowledge. She tries to explain to him the importance of studying, because no one wants an illiterate Demon King. She tries to convince him to study, showing the goals of becoming the Demon King. Meanwhile, he just wants to defeat the Demon King. After Sophia got tired of him, she just called his mother. She came and made Jilbagius sit on a seat of reflection, a chair where you get scolded and it's super uncomfortable. Anyways, the mother, Platifia Reju, the seventh queen, sounds like the typical Asian parent as she starts comparing her son with the first prince. Platifia, aka Platy's life ambition, was to make her son the Demon King. When she sees Jobagius wasn't willing to study, she gave him an offer to fight Sophia. If he wins, he won't have to study, and Sophia was more than happy to accept. Platy told her not to push too hard, though. Then, Jobagius asked whether Sophia can even fight or not. She replied that she could do anything from hand to hand combat to spearmanship. Then she poked him and they started engaging in a fight. Sophia tried with a flash punch, but Jilbagius, being a hero in his previous life, caught the punch and tries to counterpunch her, but she retreated. Sophia was impressed by his growth, but she was wondering where he learned those movements. He just lied and told her that he saw it on a military training ground, but Sophia followed Dawn and told him that this kind of martial arts doesn't exist in the demon race. No one doubted his martial arts skills are human-like, and Platy forbids him from using those martial arts as they are unfit for the demon race. Then she told him to use the demon race martial arts, which he apparently doesn't know. So the second time Sophia attacked, Jobagius was totally confused and could not think straight, causing him to lose the fight, and thus, he was forced to study. They started the study session with the most basic thing, the alphabet. And not the normal alphabet that the hero knew, but the demon race alphabet. Then, he remembers the day when he was weak at studying and getting scolded. He then started to have flashbacks of his previous life, and then, he woke up with blood on his head and the pillow was soaked in blood as well. Sophia then comes in and seems quite intrigued because Jobagius has grown horrible and now he is no longer the young master. According to his mother Platy, he was the first in history to grow horns at the age of five. Yes, five years have passed since his previous life's death. His mother was telling him to become a proper demon, meanwhile inside his consciousness, he is still Alexander the Hero. Although five years have passed, he hasn't seen the Demon King once. He was sad that he didn't obtain any information about what he planned before, but the good thing is that after growing horns, he can now perceive mana. Everyone was complimenting him, including imps, beastmen, and night elves. By the way, an imp is a demon in a compact form, meanwhile a beast man is physically strong, but mana-wise they are pretty weak. Then there are the night elves who were using bows and arrows when Alexander's village was destroyed. It seems night elves also have the same amount of mana as an imp. Night elves used to be like normal elves, and they used to have a large amount of mana. They used to worship spirits, but night elves opposed it and fought a war with the normal elves and were banished from the forest as a result. 
Because of that, they lost the spirit's affection and lost their large pool of mana and longevity. For revenge, they submit themselves to an evil god and are now part of the Dark Clan. Since they are hornless, they have less mana. The horns are directly correlated with the mana amount in the Dark Clan. According to Jobagius, this group will never get along with the Demon King's army. Then Jobagius noticed his mother's mana. Her mana was like flowing winds at the edges and cadets like a boulder at the center. She congratulated him again and she is convinced now that Jilbagius can now protect himself. She then demonstrated her power in front of everyone. She just said the word kneel and everyone was kneeling except for Jilbagius afterward. Due to having a high amount of mana, Jilbagius was able to resist the effects of his mother's spell with his own mana shield. It seems that Platy put a curse on Jilbagius, limiting his movements in other sections of the castle. But now that he has his own mana, he is allowed to enter another section of the palace. Also, Jilbagius finally got the opportunity to meet his father, the Demon King. At first, he got way too happy that he could finally kill the Demon Demon King, but then he realized that he was too weak in front of him. A few days later, as the meeting of the Demon King approached, Sophia came with a book and told him to study again. Jilbagius panicked and thought that he was supposed to be the Demon King at the library instead of her. The reason Jilbagius couldn't meet the Demon King is because the paperwork was in disorder and Sophia was in charge of the paperwork. Jilbagius also got the title of X-Wire, a junior knight title which is the lowest title in the hierarchy. The one who reaches the highest position in the pyramid can aim to become the new Demon King. It sounds Sounds complicated to Jilbagius, but Sophia corrected him that it's not complicated at all. Rather than blood relations to get the succession, demons rely on pure strength. If they don't do that, demons with strong egos would never submit to anyone, and no one can use the Soul Eater that dwells in the Demon King's lands. The Soul Eater came from a contract between the Demon King and the evil god Karival. The Soul Eater is the only reason that the Human Alliance couldn't win. All the people who stood against the Demon King already died and became the Demon King's strength, making the Demon King a fearsome opponent. After knowing the source of the Demon King's strength, Jobagius became curious to learn more about it. The first Demon King, Logius, created this lance at the the cost of his own life, and it's one of a kind. Tobagius further asked what if the lance was destroyed or lost. According to Sophia, nobody can destroy the lance, and the Demon King carries it everywhere. But if the lance is lost, the terror of the Demon King's strength will vanish, and the other demon might lose its unity. Alexander in Sajabagius was thinking of a way until Sophia offers him a book since he finally desires some knowledge. She opens the front of her cloth, and she says that the book is in her chest. Jobagius panicked for a moment, and then Sophia pulled a book from her chest. FYI, her body is her library. The book she pulled was the foundation of the Demon Kingdom, which which was written by the very first Demon King, Logius. The name of the book is Chronicle of the Foundation of the Demon Kingdom. She handed the book to Jobagius, and he was deep in thought about how little information humans had about demons. Humans mostly gathered the information about demons which were necessary for battle. He opens the book in the hopes of learning about the fearsome strength of demons and the secret of the Demon King's lance. Also, why are they invading the human race at all? Well, I think that's enough for this video. So if you like this, then please let us know in the comments. And if we get up to 100 likes, we will cover the rest of the story in our next video. Also, let us know if you like this kind of content on our channel, and thanks a lot for watching.